Stare out into the deep darkness of the night sky, into outer space. Impossibly vast, distant, serene, mysterious, magnificent, deadly. In the 19th century, people viewed the oceans, as we might view outer space today, an unknown territory. One person in particular, Ernest Haeckel, was fascinated by the world's oceans. Specifically, he was in awe of the weird and wonderful creatures that lived in the seas. The marvellous shapes of octopus and other cephalopods, the undulations of jellyfish, the armoured carapace of crabs. But the creatures that held his attention more than any other were the many invisible to the naked eye. Single-celled organisms. Haeckel would stare down through his microscope for hours, fascinated by the secret microcosm of life. And out of all the microorganisms, there were a group that he revered more than any other for their dazzling beauty, the Radiolarians, of which he saw and described nearly 4,000 species. Having intricate glass-like skeletons, some Radiolarians looked like brilliant stars, others like ornate castles, some like magical orbs. Radiolarians made him think about the beauty, the sublime artistry of nature itself. Haeckel was captivated. He also noticed that small microorganisms and large multicellular organisms were both made up of incredibly similar structures, cells. Haeckel saw in his studies of organisms, big and small, an evolutionary link. In his mind was a vision of the universe as a fabulous unfolding artwork, swirling hot matter, chemicals of the oceans evolving first into simple yet intensely beautiful forms of single-celled life, and these laying the foundations on which more complex life could take shape in all its wild variety, from mushrooms, to whales, to sharks, to seaweed, to you. Haeckel felt the theory of evolution had the capacity to explain the entire history of life, and in Haeckel's mind, its future. In his gorgeous book called Art Forms in Nature, Haeckel set out to explain his ideas by using his stunning illustrations as scientific argument to visibly show that the same symmetrical structures that exist in all single-celled life repeat within all multicellular life. By the end of his life, he was considered one of the most influential scientists and artists of the day, his name synonymous with evolution across Europe. However, before studying Radiolarians, Haeckel hadn't been sure where his life was going. As a young man, he was torn. He had seen the life of the artist and that of the scientist as totally different. Then he saw the beauty within nature, and he learned that his art could be a fundamental part of informing his science. This is the power of art and science together. <laughs>